Buttons are at the heart of every UI, of every interactive experience you're going to create. They let people do something. So today we will talk about how we can add buttons to our viewport, how can we place them and how we can style them and all the related settings about the process. In the last lesson, we've created a simple menu. So let's open that menu and quickly take a look. Right now I have my canvas panel. I have a button, I have a border and I have a text on top of that border. Now, you can go to the favorites or to the common and click and drag and add another button then select that button and change the position and the size and it's gonna be a pain imagine if you want to add now even another button if you want to create a duplicate of this button so select any element and press ctrl d to duplicate that element now if i move around so now i'm going to again change it on the x axis and the y axis and as you can see this is really not optimal it will take time to add elements and place them around so what we do in such scenario now we have the canvas panel as the main route the floor plan of our user interface where we place things around but it doesn't mean we cannot add another panel so in this scenario if we want the panels to be vertically aligned then we need a vertical box so click and drag and add that vertical box and if you click on it again the default behavior it will be on the top left corner so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to place this vertical box in the center left of my screen so i'm going to click on anchors since this is placed under a canvas panel and i'm going to press ctrl and shift and i'm going to place the vertical box in the left center of my screen now i'm going to select the buttons we've created and now notice how each have different options and actually notice because they are all under the canvas panel you can set the anchors and the size and so on but the moment we place these buttons or any other element under another sort of panel the settings here will change so once you see the border you can release the mouse and now all the buttons are under our vertical box and now the buttons are not exactly centered because the vertical box dimensions are being set manually so right now we have three buttons we need to change the size of the vertical box on the y-axis to include our three buttons and now the buttons are perfectly centered or you can enable size to content and this will auto size or dynamically size the vertical box based on the elements we have so if i select the button and press ctrl d to create a duplicate you will see that the vertical box is expanding dynamically based on the elements so it's up to you whether to use size to content or to set the dimensions manually you will know when to use each as you progress whether you are placing things manually you want the absolute position or you are dynamically generating buttons so the more you learn about umg and blueprint the more you can connect all the dots. I just wanted to let you know that I have a blueprint course with many, many more lessons similar to this. Anything you can think of from points of interest to teleportation system, to mini maps, to changing time of day, to touch inputs and so on. I keep adding more lessons. It's something I have been working on all of 2025 and I'm still working on. So if you are interested in learning blueprint and taking your skills to the next level, you can check out the link in the description. Now, let's go back to the lesson. I'm going to delete a button three are more than enough for now and in order to make things slightly more readable i'm going to click on a text and i'm going to add it under the button notice how the vertical box expanded on the x axis now i'm going to press ctrl c on the text and i'm going to press ctrl v on each button to create duplicates i'm going to select the first text i'm going to name it start i'm going to select the next and i'm going to call it about and i'm going to select the final one and i'm going to call it exit now notice when we change the text we made it smaller the buttons also went smaller so there are multiple ways if you want like wider buttons one of the easiest ways to do that is to select the texts and then go to padding and on the left and the right padding you can increase them so let's say i want on the left and the right padding to have 20 
and now we have 20 from each side so this is one way if you want to change the dimensions or if you don't want to use size to content you want to change the dimensions on manually you can also do that so this is up to you speaking of padding if you also want to have space between the buttons you can select the buttons and on the very top here we have start vertical box we have padding and we have now zero padding so if you set this to two we will have two pixels between each box so two from the top two from the bottom and two and two then in this area it's four so if you set this to eight then this is here eight and then another eight and eight so that's 16 now what about the size because by default if you change the size on all of these boxes or all of them the buttons to fill nothing really is going to happen unless you change the space so right now the size to content is on so if i disable this and i enable this or increase the size on the y as you can see this here is set to fill so it's taking the entire space it's filling the entire space and if i set it to auto it's going to be the same so in addition to that when you click on fill you have this number here so you can set it the moment you move this uh, value above zero it will fill the entire space unless you have another button like so so right now this is set to one so if you set this to 0.5 and this is now set to 0.1 so it's like a percentage you can think about it this way the number here so if i set this also to 0.5 then they will share the fill area so if you don't want that let's say here i'm going to click on this button i'm going to set it to auto now this is filling the entire area i can also change this back to auto but let's say for this button for any reason i have in my mind i don't want it to be placed like here one two three i want it to be placed below let's say because this is the exit button i want for my important buttons to be on the top and then i want some space and at the very bottom i want to have the exit button in that case you want to change the vertical alignment since this is a vertical box and i'm talking things vertically from fill vertically to bottom align vertically like so and of course we need to change it to fill now you can see what i'm talking about so the vertical box the horizontal box and some other panels they all have their unique settings that you can play with click things around i'm going to set this back to auto and i'm going to set fill vertically no problem and i'm going to click back on my vertical box and i'm going to click on size to content now let's talk about the styling of the button so I'm going to click on position X 40. So I'm going to move my button slightly on the right. Now, when you click on any button, the values of any button, when you add a button, we have appearance. So we have style, we have color and opacity, and we have background color. Style is related for the button. Color and opacity is related for the content of the button. So let's say this is now the text is in white color. We can tint it with any value we want. So that's possible to do from here. Or if you want to simply tint the content of a button, you can do that from here. Now notice if the color of the text is black and we try to tint black. So if you multiply black with any number, it's always going to be zero because black is zero. So keep that in mind. When you import icons, for example, you want the tinting of the icon or their color to be white color, not black color. So when you tint it with the color, it will actually be tinted. Now background color is the background color of the button if you want to change the style of the button you can change it from the background color or you can change it from style on style we have four different values for each button or four different states we have normal we have hovered pressed and disabled and for normal hovered pressed disabled foreground this is related to the content of the button here right now this is set to blue but this is here set to white unless we go here so i'm going to click now on the text and i'm going to enable inherit you can see now this is set to blue so just this is something to keep in mind if you're changing the values here and nothing is changing why that's because we need for the color and opacity of the text or whatever we place under the button to inherit the values we have here the foreground background and so on okay now let's start with normal here we have an image so if you design something in figma or photoshop you can import an image of a button place it here that's one 
and you can set the size of the image. Now the size is kind of tricky. If you're using a vertical box, it will take the size automatically. So that's why I kind of spent more time talking about the size on the X and the size of the content. In addition to image, we have tint. So this is pretty self-explanatory. If I tint this to let's say some nice blue, like so, you can tint it. And we have now the settings here, draw as and outline settings. Now outline settings is only related or we can see it when we have rounded box. So if I set this to box, we will not see the outline settings. And of course this change it's not rounded anymore. And we have the none, of course. So right now, if you set this on none, I'm going to click on play. So now the normal is none, but hovered and pressed are not none. They are still the default values. In addition to none, as I said, we have box. Image is image. When you assign an image here, it will be visible as an image. So right now I'm going to set this, as you can see, it's stretched, tinted with this color. So that's an image. And we also have rounded box, which is the default rounded box. Now, rounded box is nice and interesting. We have the corner radius. So let's say on the X, Y, Z, and W, we have now the value of four. So if I set this to 12 and set this to 12 here, you can keep them. So let's say this is one style. If I decide, no, I want to set this to 12 as well, this is to 12 as 4 to and 4. This is another style. So with little changing things around, you can see you can have interesting styles and interesting corners. Now, I'm going to change the width, let's say to 2 or 1.5. That will change the width of the outline. And let's say I want for the outline to be kind of bluish, maybe darker blue. And that's it. Now, I also want to change these two to 12 and going 4 and this to 4. So we have this nice shape. Okay. Okay. Now, if I click on play and I hover my mouse, you will see things went back to normal. If I click, they are also normal. That's because we need to set the settings on hovered and pressed and even disabled if you want to have their settings. You can do that manually, of course, or you can simply press shift right click and that will copy the settings we set here all of them on normal and now shift left click and left click and that will paste the setting so on hovered let's say i want to have a brighter color and on pressed let's say i want to have a darker color like so and now when i click on play this is now brighter and when i click this is darker and of course don't forget we are showing our user interface by default and for testing purposes by using create widget and we are adding that to the viewport so i use the level blueprint and these two just for testing purposes as i'm using or creating my ui and i noticed in the new unreal versions we have the widget preview this is also very nice for another lesson now let's keep going now this button here we can copy the style completely so i'm going to shift right click and i'm going to click on this button shift left click and this button shift left click and now we have the style we want on these buttons of course you can create one button as its own widget blueprint and then add that button here and it will act like a global button that you change once and it will change everywhere that is also for future now this is it regarding the basics of a button if we continue here we have the style as we said on the style we have the defaults we have the content of the button we have the padding so now we have also normal and pressed padding so this also to keep in mind and we have the ability to assign sounds when we press when we click when we hover as well as the color and opacity of the content of our button and if you want another method to simply multiply colors with each other you can change the background color as well but it's preferable to change it either only on normal or on the background color well sometimes you want to change the alpha to zero and you want to animate this from zero to one you can do that so before we wrap up all i'm going to do now is to go to the graph and there is something very important on all of the elements we create in our ui in our umg it's better to name them so now under details we have button 548 i'm going to call it button start and this button here i'm going to call it for example button exit and this one you guessed it let's call it about that's because when you go to the graph and you take a look at the variable 
tables you have, now it's much easier to read the elements we've added and now we can easily add them to our graph and we can program them. So when you click on a button, we have on clicked, pressed, released, hovered, unhovered and so on. In this scenario, I'm simply going to add the exit one and I'm going to add on click and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to search for quit game and that's it. So now when I click on play and I click on exit, that will turn off the game for us or the experience. Now, in future lessons, we will keep talking more about interactivity, what more we can do with buttons and so on. So let me know in the comments what type of lessons you want to see. As always, I really hope you found this lesson useful. I'd love to see your comments, your questions, and thank you so much for watching. Stay hydrated and I will see you on the next one. Take care.